Okay, this is a tutorial about getting started with VirtualBox. I thought I'd show you the VirtualBox website to start with. It's at virtualbox.org. And if you go here, you can get some information about VirtualBox. Then all you have to do is go to the Downloads page. And you can see the VirtualBox binaries. And you can download the installer for Windows, OS X, Linux, or Solaris. And so I did that. I installed it for Windows, downloaded it, and installed it. Um, I was actually updating it because I already had it. And now I'm running the program. Here's the program right here. Um, and you can see I already have some virtual machines here that are powered off um, and saved. Uh, an Ubuntu 10.10, an Indian firewall software, firewall router, and a Windows XP virtual machine. And so I wanted to walk you through um, setting up uh, a new virtual machine with VirtualBox. So what I'll do is I'll click New, and I'm going to install one for Ubuntu 11.10. So I'll hit Next, and I'll just type in Ubuntu 11.10. And you can see the settings here. You can pick your settings. Um, I'll just pick Ubuntu and Linux, and that's fine. Hit Next, set my memory. I'll take it up to, let's say, a gig of RAM, or you could go as high as a, you could go uh, maybe like a gig and a half or something like that. And then I'll hit Next. And then it wants me to create a new hard disk. So I'll hit Next. And then it gives me a choice of the kind of hard disk image that you're going to want to make. Now, I can choose the default, which is a virtual box disk image, or if I'm thinking about possibly running this virtual machine in, um, let's say, VMware, I might want to do a VMDK uh, virtual machine uh, image. So that way I could open this up in VMware or something like that. Or at least it seems like this option is available. Um, I'm just going to take the default, which is a virtual box disk image. I'll hit next and I'll say dynamically allocated for the size so that way as the operating system the virtual machine operating system gets more data uh, it will expand so uh, I'll do that next and location and then the disk size so it recommends 8 gigabytes so I'll just I'll use that I'll hit next and then create and Right, once got every all these settings are set, so I'll just hit create again. Alright, and there it is, Ubuntu 11.10 ready to go. Um, what I can do is I can go in and then take a look at some of the settings before we fire it up. So let's do that. So I'll open up these settings here and system processor acceleration display. If I want, I can. you can see that they've used video memory, 12 megabytes. That looks pretty good. Um, storage space, right? The Ubuntu hard drive VDI, the image. Let's see, it shows you where it's located. It's in my users folder. Network, I could set the network adapter. I'm going to use a uh, bridged network adapter, which I prefer. Um, serial ports, USB, shared folders, all of these things are good to take a look at especially if this is the first time you're using it all right advanced description okay I'll click OK and then what we want to do is we want to fire this up and hopefully uh, I have the Ubuntu installer um, ISO file I have it right here on my desktop but I've burnt it to a disk I right clicked on it and burnt a disk image and I have it on a CD in my CD drive, so I'm just going to try to install it from there. So I'll start. And notice it says um, how to release the captured cursor, and it says the right control key. So click OK, and I'll hit Next, and Next, Next. It's asking me where I want to boot from. And so once again, if I click in here, my key, my key is now captured, right? And I have no cursor. And if I want to, I can um, release the cursor. Notice it says here, capture, right control click, do not show again, capture. So now I have no, no um, cursor. But if I drag off of the window, it, it uh, gives me the cursor back, or I could hit the right control key. 
So it looks like the uh, seen the Ubuntu installation disk in my CD-ROM uh, drive, and looks like it'll walk me through now the installation process. So it's pretty easy. I'm just going to walk through the installation process, set up my default user and my passwords, and uh, restart, and then I'll have a um, virtual box, virtual machine. Okay, you can see the window has expanded now, and VirtualBox seems to be running this installer pretty nicely. I have um, some visual symbols here at the bottom to show me my disk, my CD-ROM. You can see it blinking green here. You can see um, USB, um, also my bridge network adapter, and I'm just waiting for the disk to be read, and, uh, and then I can walk through the installation process. Okay, here's the um, screen for installing Ubuntu. I'll just hit install Ubuntu. And I'm connected to the internet. So that's nice. I'm not plugged into a power source, so I'm going to double check that. All right, and there we go. Um, I can choose to download updates while I'm installing or third party software while I'm installing. I'm just going to click continue just to do a basic install. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. Continue. Use the whole disk. Install now. And now I just need to wait for the installation process to um, begin. I'll have to choose my location. My keyboard. My username. And password. And now I just need to wait for the installation process to copy all of the necessary files to the disk and then unpack them. And um, it should take about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'll restart and Ubuntu will be installed. Okay, it looks like the installation is almost finished here. I just thought I'd give you one more peek at it. Okay, and the installation is complete, so I'll just click restart. Okay, um, looks like the disk has been ejected. It tells me right here that I need to press enter to restart and I'm restarted. Once again, I'm getting the message about my pointer, my cursor being captured, my pointer being captured. I'm going to click OK, don't send me this message again. Um, to release the, the cursor if you need to, for some reason if you can't scroll out of the virtual machine window, you just hit the right control key. And I should see this machine restarting. There it is and looks like Ubuntu 11.10 will be up and running in a second in a VirtualBox virtual machine. Alright, that's excellent.